Something daunting to think about is that as in the year as in 2040, the Arctic region may have its first completely ice-free summer due to rising temperatures according to a study published in geophysical research letters. This image captured by the California Department of Water Resources depicts the receding of water in the area over the span of only three years as a result of droughts. And these conditions don't affect everyone equally. The International Union for the Conservation of Nature states that extreme weather events have a greater impact on the poor and most vulnerable. Unfortunately, women make up 70% of the world's poor. BBC reports that of those displaced by climate change effects, 80% are women. This is due to the fact that men go to work, leaving the women to take care of the homes, making them more susceptible to dangerous conditions. The data suggests that the quality and health of the environment it has a direct correlation to women. Former Prime Minister Margaret Thatcher in her speech to the United Nations General Assembly states that by damaging the land and polluting the water and adding greenhouse gases at an unprecedented rate, humans are changing the planet in damaging and dangerous ways. This leads me to my research question of, to what extent does the empowerment of women in developing countries impact the global environment? Through an analysis of the environmental lens, it can be argued that the empowerment of women can ultimately assist countries with combating the unprecedented growth of global temperature. For instance, Grist, an independent news outlet, states that by making women ram farms in developing countries more efficient, it would stop approximately 2 billion tons of carbon dioxide from entering the atmosphere. This is significant because the carbon dioxide is the leading cause of the rising climate temperature, as stated by the Union of Concerned Sciences. Experts from the World Food Bank proposed that by changing older social structures, it would improve how women is treated. For example, one traditional norm is to only pass down a farm to a son, leaving the women relegated to unpaid farm work. To fix these social structures, parents would need to encourage their daughters to take over the farm. However, this solution has significant drawbacks. There could be a lack of informed Please excuse this interruption. Teachers, at, all, at this time, all week 2025 prompters, please report to P7 for your uh, training. All week 2025 prompters, please report to P7. However, this solution has significant drawbacks. There could be a lack of enforcement due to it depending on government officials' discernment of if they agree with the teachings of the parent. Furthermore, there is not a measure in place that can effectively monitor these parents. And lastly, the parents can decide whether or not to start passing down more modernized teachings, making it less efficient. This picture from the Organization for Eco Economic Cooperation and Development displays that developing countries have higher rates of gender inequality as shown by the darker color Leading me to my next claim that, through an examination under the cultural lens, increased equality between the sexes would positively impact the environment. Evidence from the UN environment alludes to the statement that women have a deeper understanding of issues concerning the environment due to their vulnerability to it. Moreover, the World Health Organization claims that with the incorporation of a gender analysis, there is a higher chance of fighting climate change further proving that increased equality between men and women in developing countries would serve as a way to help the environment's health. A potential solution for gender inequality would be to equip women with tools and skills needed to start their own businesses, as mentioned by the World Food Program to improve the status of women. Despite this, this solution has a low impact on the quality of the environment and fails to solve the overarching problem of its deterioration. Some may argue that the empowerment of women is not relevant in today's society and therefore not needed. For instance, women outnumber men in American colleges and are graduating at higher rates than men. Additionally, the United Nations women have international laws protecting women that many countries have signed on. However, women in developing countries still have to fight for education and basic land owning rights, displaying current challenges that many face. 
ultimately, the best solution to solve the environmental crisis will be to integrate gender perspectives from developing countries into diminution and incorporation actions in order to help alleviate the effects of human activity on the planet. BBC reports that the average representation in global negotiating positions for women is below 30%. On the flip side, the UNDP reports that countries with a high representation of women in Congress slash Parliament are more likely to ratify multinational environmental agreements. One of the examples of success with gender, gender perspective integration is when Oxfam International in Tanzania integrated a gender enterprise and market tool which focused on women's economic leadership and climate change. They found solutions for helping the environment and implementation strategies for poor men and women. <laughs> However, this solution requires the willing participation of women. We have to want to be involved with the process, and in some communities, they can face stigma for quote unquote stepping out of their place. Also, it can be a lengthy process to come up with strategies to, strategies to implement them and to see the results quickly. In conclusion, the disempowerment of women is a disservice to the countries that are trying to solve environmental issues like climate change. With a greater amount of equality, there can be more policies created to preserve the environment, leading to more stability. Overall, an examination through the environmental and cultural lenses display the imposing need for both gender perspectives to be included in actions concerning the betterment of the global environment. Thank you. What questions do you have? Okay, first question. How did your research question evolve as you moved through the research process? Did your research go in a different direction than you originally planned? Well, throughout the entire process, my research stayed in the same direction with focusing on women and climate change. But in the beginning, I did not know if I should focus on women in developing countries or women as a whole. But as I did more research and in my IWA, when I was conducting my argument, I found that women in developing countries would have a much larger impact due to their status in the world currently. Okay, and second question, if you had more time, what additional research would you conduct related to this issue? Um, if I had more time, I would conduct more research uh, concerning the climate change because there have been recent reports coming out that the climate is actually rising in some areas and that there are other extreme weather events that kind of contradict climate change. So I would investigate further um, how the problem is progressing along and how it is affecting different people. Okay, thank you.